So let's start with the summary of The Art of Work, A Proven Path to Discovering What You Were Meant to Do by Jeff Goins. Introduction Did you know that only 13% of employees all over the world are fully engaged with their jobs? This means that 87% of employees are not satisfied and unhappy with their current occupation. You might be thinking, that is just the way it is. But Jeff, the author, is here to tell you that you are wrong. You work for the majority of your life. Do you seriously think that being unhappy and unsatisfied is the way to go about work? It certainly is not. In this book, you will learn that you can find meaning and purpose in work. It is all about finding your calling. This book will guide you through it. Listening to your life. The call to something old, not new. You are probably familiar with stories about people achieving their dreams. In almost all of these stories, there are two patterns you will see. The first pattern is this. These people had a goal, worked hard and achieved the goal. This pattern says that if you never stop working hard, you will get what you want. The second pattern is this. You get what you get. Life is not fair. What will happen to you? You have to accept. Maybe you did not get your dream job, but this rejection led to another path that made you happier. These two patterns are not the only way you can achieve a dream. Your purpose or goal can be found by a new pattern. What this new pattern is, you will find out in a while. First, take a look at the facts. Do you know that majority of people hate their job? It does not come as a surprise when people complain about their work. But author Jeff Goins sees this as a major problem. You are not your best self when you are doing something you hate. That is why people jump from job to job. They try to find something that fulfills them. But they always end up failing miserably. So what do you do in this situation? This is when the new pattern comes in. The logic behind this new pattern was inspired by Austrian psychiatrist Viktor Frankl. What if the reason you are unhappy is that you are trying hard to be happy? Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor. He knew very well what it felt like to suffer all the time. From his experience, he observed that human beings are not born to seek pleasure or to avoid pain. No. Victor believed that humans had deeper motivations than that. He believed that people seek meaning. It is the sense of purpose that truly satisfies a person. You need a reason to be happy and not just experience the feeling of happiness. Having no direction in life can be such an awful thing. Often you try to have purpose by seeking what makes you happy. This is the wrong move. Again, you will only fail if you keep trying to be happy. True satisfaction comes from finding your calling. You are once again stuck. You do not know what you are supposed to do. You think you have no passion for anything. But for Jeff, these are the wrong statements to think about. What you are really saying is that you are afraid to fail. No one likes failure. But if you do not grab opportunities that come your way, you will surely get stuck. You will live an unfulfilling life. Yes, you will fail countless times. But do you know what is worse than failing? It is doing nothing. One's calling sounds magical and groundbreaking. People think it just comes naturally to you. For instance, you could be enjoying a cup of coffee. Then suddenly you feel it. You have the calling to be a social worker or a job that lets you help people. A calling is nothing like that. 
The truth is that you already have a sense of what you are supposed to do in life. You just have to dig deep and find out what it is. For Jeff, he already considered being a writer at some point in his life, but he was scared to actually pursue it. Get rid of the notion that a calling is something you have or do not have. Take a look back at your life. Become aware of what your past experiences and challenges are telling you. Write down on a piece of paper your major life events. Think about how they shaped you into the person you are now. In other words, listen to what your life is trying to tell you. Painful practice. When trying isn't good enough. Surely you are familiar with talent shows such as American Idol. There are people who gave up their jobs to audition. They hope that they can finally pursue what they wanted to do all their life. Singing has always been their passion, but talent shows only have one winner. Many contestants are insulted and are often rejected by the judges. Shows like these make you wonder, what does it really take to succeed? All these people have passion, but only few make it to the top. The answer is certainly not talent. Talent is not something that can make or break you. It is true that some people are lucky to be talented at singing or dancing. But nothing compares to intense preparation. Practice is what makes you excel and succeed, not talent. However, there are also people who are talented and who practice as well. Yet they still do not succeed. What could be the problem? You have the skills and you constantly keep improving them. Here Jeff provides an answer. It is not practice that is lacking. It is the kind of practice that you are doing. Just do your best. This is often the advice you hear from your parents. Jeff often heard this from his parents as well. When he wanted to play the saxophone, he only played it half-heartedly. He practiced it and he learned to play it. And that was it. For Jeff, he tried his best to learn the instrument. Are you like Jeff? Do you try something new without really pushing yourself? You do a mediocre job just so you can say, I did my best without doing your best. Starting today, stop underestimating your capabilities. You can do so much more in whatever activity or profession you are in. It is hard to battle with your mind. You think you have given all you have got, but you can push yourself to do more. Change your mindset. Deliberate practice was the term first introduced by Anders Ericsson, a Swedish psychologist. Ericsson claimed deliberate practice leads to expert performance. Deliberate practice is painful. It helps you grow and excel, but it takes a lot of work. Deliberate practice is when you work on a skill or job for at least 10,000 hours. However, just because you spend 10,000 hours on a skill does not mean you are an expert. This number of hours just means you only have started. Deliberate practice also includes deep practice. Deep practice was first introduced by Daniel Coyle. He is the author of the book called the Talent Code According to Coyle, it is not enough to practice for 10,000 hours. You also have to fail again and again in the process. How will you call a deliberate practice a success? It is when you learn not only the right way to do something, but the best way to do something. The activity will also become second nature to you, like blinking. Each time you fail, you push through the feeling of disappointment. Only then will you become an expert in the activity or skill. Building bridges, the leap that wasn't a leap. How do you know you wanted to become a writer? What pushed you to go back to school? How did you know that your fiancé was the one? These questions are heavy. Often people answer it with this familiar phrase, you just know. The phrase sounds magical, does it not? 
Unfortunately, not an ounce of it is true. Jeff admits that there are a lucky few who just knew what they wanted to do. But majority of people are not so lucky. We should stop the notion that your calling will come naturally to you. The truth is that your purpose in life is a process. It takes effort and hard work to know what you really want to do. People are ashamed to work for something. They are afraid that it will not work out. They think all that effort wasted for nothing. But this kind of mentality will only bring you regret. Living life in fear is not living at all. For you to have purpose, you need to work hard for it. You need to move. As mentioned, finding what you are meant to do is a process. There are three stages to it. First, you hear the call. The calling sounds different to each person. What is important is that you listen and do something about it. Often one's calling comes out during one's apprenticeship. An apprenticeship is when you spend time serving someone else's dream. You follow what your mentor does. You learn from her. Being exposed to someone who knows their purpose can bring out your purpose too. Second, you respond. When you start to hear your calling, do not just listen. Act on it. Get rid of your thinking that what is meant to be will be. Do not think. If it is not yours, you should just give up. You have to persevere in finding your own calling. Third, you begin to believe. Another misconception is that passion enables us to work hard. But it is actually the opposite. When you work hard on something, it fuels your passion to do more. Acting on a calling even though you are still uncertain helps you grow. It shows that you are willing to change for the sake of finding your purpose. Believe that every small action you make will make your purpose even clearer, and you will know that you are on the right path when you act on it. Opportunities will start appearing. You will feel that what you are doing is right. There is a momentum in your actions. All these things will only come to you if you move. If you still feel lost, do not worry. Ask help from your mentors or people you trust. They can help you figure out what truly it is you are meant to do. Maybe there are common themes in your life that you overlooked. Your mentors can point this out to you. Pivot points. Why failure is your friend. A pivot point is something you are allowed to do in basketball. You are only allowed to take two steps once you stop dribbling the ball. The last step that you take is called the pivot foot. This foot must always stick to the ground. The other foot, meanwhile, can freely move. The pivot point limits your movement. Yes, but it does not imply that you are locked in a certain direction. Any basketball player can turn from left to right and from side to side. There is no limit since you can always pivot. In finding your purpose, unexpected things will happen. You will have to pivot again and again. In other words, you will face dead ends in your journey. There will be times when you have to go through completely different routes. You have heard of people's success stories. That despite their failures, they succeeded. But this is not the correct way to think about it. People do not succeed in spite of failure. People succeed because of failure. Once you find your calling, you will experience moments of doubt. Your passion for achieving it will sometimes disappear. These moments are the most crucial ones. You have to keep on pivoting despite being demotivated to do so. Failure gives you a new perspective. It tells you that a fixed plan is not always the best plan. Albert Einstein worked at a patent office. Benjamin Franklin had to leave his hometown. Steve Jobs got kicked out of the very company he had built. Famous or not, people go through pain. All of us go through failure. But what separates the successful ones 
from the unsuccessful ones is this. They learn from their failure and they keep trying. Einstein had a boring job, but he used his time there to do thought experiments. Einstein would often come up with hypothetical situations regarding different theories. Franklin was hurt by being kicked out of town, but he learned from the experience, and eventually he became a diplomat. He learned to understand people better. As for jobs, he worked at Pixar and tried playing the CEO there. The experience made him a better leader when he returned to Apple. Your magnum opus. What legacy looks like. Pursuing a dream is not all about you. That sounds confusing, does it not? But that is what Jeff realized when he finally found his purpose. His dream of being a writer was not only for him. Jeff had a desk job before he went on to become a writer. This desk job was his only work for a long time. It was stable and secure. But Jeff knew that it was not his calling. So one day Jeff went inside his boss's office and said he was quitting. Jeff had saved enough money so that he could pursue writing. Writing has no financial security. But Jeff had thought ahead and saved money. But he encountered another problem. He was not motivated to write. Now that he did not have to work for money, what happens now? Just like everybody else, Jeff felt lost. But he acted on this sense of not knowing what to do. He asked for advice from his friends, who were their own boss. One particular friend was named Stu. Stu had a successful software company. Jeff asked Stu what was different from working for someone else to being your own boss. Stu at first admitted that nothing really changed. But then he went to Kenya and he had an awakening. A lot of people in Kenya did not have the opportunity to go to school. They wanted to but they could not afford to do so. Stu felt guilty. He was privileged and he had lots of wealth. But then he realized that he could use his wealth to help these people. That is what happened with Jeff as well. He started writing and eventually earned money from it. He then used this money to help build a workshop for women in Kenya. For Jeff, work is not just something that gives you money. Work should make a difference in your life and in other people's lives. Work is not just a boring, lifeless thing you have to do. Yes, you can keep looking at it that way. But work can be something that can fully satisfy you. Look at billionaires and Hollywood actors and actresses. They are aware of how very rich they are. Sure, some of them feel guilty for being wealthy but some of them use this guilt in a productive way. These famous rich people made it their mission to help and influence other people who are less privileged. They use the benefits of being a celebrity to do something good. Working on your calling feels good at first. You finally feel that you have purpose. But just like life, there will always be ups and downs. You will feel discouraged. You will feel cynical. At some point, you just want to quit. It is much easier to just stick to your old routine and not to fulfill your calling. With all your heart, trust that every frustration and hurt you feel has a purpose. It helps you grow and it helps you learn. Your calling is not just for selfish purposes. It is about being and becoming someone good. It is about inspiring the people around you. The work is never done. It is great to work on your calling. It makes you feel alive and unbeatable. Unfortunately, it can also negatively impact you. Making and doing something meaningful can be addicting, but you will be so caught up in it that you lose yourself in the process. What does this mean? 
It basically means that you have identified yourself with your work. You are no longer a single identity, but one that is connected to your work. You are so passionate about it that you fear you will die before you even finish it. This is what great writers such as Hemingway and J.R.R. Tolkien feared. The thought that they would die without finishing their projects greatly terrified them. The future is uncertain. Who knows what will be left finished or unfinished? You have to accept this as you do your work. Maybe you will not hit the milestones you are currently working on. Maybe you will achieve milestones you did not expect either. Your relationship with your work should not be results oriented. It feels great if you finish something. It feels empowering to say, I completed it. But this is not what a calling is all about. Your calling is doing something good while being unattached to the results. Life is short and long at the same time. You can do a lot of things during your time here on earth. But you also have to acknowledge that you cannot live forever. Instead of fearing death, accept it. Success is not about the number of goals you have achieved. Rather, it is about the legacy that you leave behind. Conclusion First you learn that there is a pattern to achieving one's dreams. You either work hard and get that dream, or you do not get it and find something else instead. However, these patterns are not the only way to go about it. The new pattern is not just about reaching your dreams. It is about finding your calling. Your calling gives you a sense of purpose. It gives you a reason to be happy. Second, you learn that one's calling is not something that comes naturally. It does not just hit you out of nowhere. Discovering your calling is being aware of your experiences. It is taking the time to see that life has been leaving you clues on what you are meant to do. Third, you learn that talent will not always guarantee success. The only secure factor for success is deliberate practice. Get out of the mentality that you either have what it takes or you don't. Anyone can succeed, but not everyone will work hard for it. Deliberate practice is spending at least 10,000 hours practicing a skill or job. It is failing again and again until you master the skill. Fourth, you learn that your calling is an ongoing process. It occurs in three stages. First, you hear the call. Second, you respond. Third, you begin to believe. It is crucial to ask for help during this time. People often find they are calling when they are helping someone working on their passion. Fifth, you learn that failure will always be a part of your success. People do not succeed despite their failures. People succeed because of their failures. Sixth, you learn that your calling is not necessarily producing a concrete result. It is leaving behind something that has a positive effect on people even after you are gone. You have learned what you should do to discover your purpose. It is a lifelong journey, but it is a meaningful one. There will be times when you feel like you cannot do it. You can rest, but do not ever quit. Aim to live a life full of oh wells than a life full of what ifs. So I hope you like the summary as well as our efforts behind it. And if you think we were able to create valuable content for you, you can show your love by giving a review. Jai Hind!